Welcome to Module 2 of the Gould's Water Technology Turbine Pumps e-learning course. In this module, you will learn the parts that make up the turbine pump and their assemblies, and gain an understanding of how each component assembly contributes to overall pump performance. When you complete this module, you will better understand the parts that make up turbine pump assemblies, each component's primary function, how turbine pumps work, and the terminology needed to correctly specify a pump design. In this first section of the module, we will look at the components of a water lubricated line shaft vertical turbine bowl assembly, the motor and discharge head, the packing box assembly, and the column assembly. We will briefly identify what each one does. Starting in the motor and discharge head, the adjusting nut permits exact impeller adjustment for maximum performance. A heavy-duty discharge head provides maximum accessibility to service the packing box assembly. A two-piece head shaft is standard. A pre-lube connection is provided for the pre-lubrication of the open line shaft bearings in pumping levels greater than 35 feet. The column adapter accepts a threaded or flanged column. The adjusting nipple threads directly into the column adapter. The head shaft stick up is accurately set by threading the head on the column. Running through the top of the motor is the stainless steel head shaft, with the bronze packing gland cast iron box beneath that, and that's followed by an extra long bronze throttle bushing for better shaft support and longer packing life. Here's a closer look at the column assembly. First, the line shaft is ground and polished for exact bearing fit and is available in carbon steel or stainless steel. Next is the stainless steel bearing retainer, which contains fluted rubber line shaft bearings designed to rapidly flush sand and grit. And finally, the outer column pipe and couplings are parallel threaded and accurately machined for easy installation and accurate alignment. Now let's take a look at the components that make up the bowl assembly, suction inlet, and the manufacturer's standard materials of construction, which, for the purposes of this training, will represent the xylem standards. At the top is a bronze discharge bowl bearing, followed by a cast iron discharge bowl. The pump shaft is oversized and manufactured from high strength, polished stainless steel. Cast iron intermediate bowls house three other key components. First, the impellers, manufactured from 316 stainless steel or silicon bronze, are precision balanced to ensure a smooth operation. Next, the bronze or rubber intermediate bowl bearings help ensure a long pump life. The steel construction of the lock collets secures the impeller to the pump shaft. The design of the impeller provides maximum pump efficiency. Just below the intermediate bowls is the stainless steel sand collar. It's located precisely at the suction bowl bearing to eliminate possible sand buildup. Next, the bronze suction bowl bearing is greased and packed for a long, trouble-free life. Finally, a tailpipe or strainer is an optional component for the suction inlet. A steel tailpipe is cut to the desired length for the best suction conditions, while a stainless steel strainer provides protection from large solids. As previously mentioned, these are the manufacturer's standard materials of construction. However, materials can be changed to meet specific applications. Now, let's identify the components and functions of an oil lubricated line shaft vertical turbine bowl assembly, its two types of column assemblies, and tube tension assembly. Starting in the motor and discharge head, the adjusting nut permits the exact impeller adjustment for maximum performance. Next, a large capacity manual or solenoid oiler assures a constant oil supply. A heavy duty discharge head provides maximum accessibility to service the tube tension assembly. A two piece head shaft is standard. A locking ring positively locks the adjusting nipple to the discharge head. The adjusting nipple threads directly into the column adapter. Here again, the head shaft stick-up is accurately set by threading the head on the column. The tube tension assembly features a steel head shaft, a heavy-duty cast iron tube tension nut, a bronze bushing with spiral grooves to ensure positive lubrication to the line shaft bearings, 
and a heavy-duty tension plate for their positive alignment. While the column assembly of an oil-lubricated line shaft pump may look similar to a water-lubricated one, it has different components that are necessary to maintain the proper lubrication. Like a water-lubricated column assembly, an oil-lubricated assembly features a high-strength steel line shaft that's ground and polished for an exact bearing fit. But it also has an extra heavy steel tube that encloses the line shaft for positive bearing alignment. Inside the tube, there are high-strength bronze bearings with spiral grooves for positive lubrication. The column pipe and couplings are the same as the water-lubricated column assembly, parallel threaded and machined for easy installation and accurate alignment. Finally, this column assembly features a tube centering spider that stabilizes the enclosing tube for smoother operation. Now, let's take a look at the components that make up the bowl assembly, suction inlet, and the manufacturer's standard materials of construction. Placed near the top is a tube adapter bushing, usually made of bronze. An optional double bowl seal is located underneath the bushing, where it ensures positive sealing of a developed head. The pump shaft, placed slightly below the seal, is oversized and manufactured from high-strength polished stainless steel. The discharge bowl is manufactured from cast iron and contains relief ports to ensure positive bearing lubrication. The bronze discharge bowl bearing provides a close tolerance fit for minimum leakage. The remaining components are identical to the water lubricated bowl assembly and suction inlet. In this next section, we'll look at the components of a submersible vertical turbine and provide a general overview of the two motor types. Multi-stage submersible vertical turbine pumps are ideal for deep-set well pumping and crooked well applications. The discharge pipe is sized for optimum water velocities in order to ensure peak hydraulic performance. Discharge bowls are available in several sizes in order to best accommodate NPT or a flanged pipe. The extra-long top protected bronze discharge bearing ensures positive shaft alignment and stabilization for extended life. The cast iron intermediate bowls house three other key components. First, the impellers, manufactured from 316 stainless steel or silicon bronze, are precision balanced to ensure a smooth operation. The upthrust collar is designed to provide an extra layer of safety in preventing a momentary upthrust from occurring at startup. Next, the bronze or rubber intermediate bowl bearings help ensure a long pump life. The steel construction of the lock collets secures the impeller to the pump shaft. The design of the impeller provides maximum pump efficiency. The pump shaft is manufactured from stainless steel for premium strength and excellent corrosion resistance and is ground and polished for a smooth bearing surface. Below the intermediate bowls is the suction inlet. Contoured for smooth flow entrance, the suction inlet is protected by an oversized stainless steel strainer to prevent damaging solids from entering. Next, ductile iron provides premium strength for the suction adapter, and the NEMA design provides positive motor alignment. An open area in the adapter allows for easy access to the pump motor coupling. Finally, the large stainless steel pump motor coupling is accurately manufactured to deliver perfect alignment balance, and power transmission. Submersible pumps and motors offer an extensive list of options that other deep well pumping equipment systems don't. Today's advanced engineering designs assure that units will provide long-term pumping service. A hermetically sealed motor utilizes windings that are hermetically sealed within the external shell casing on the outside. The hermetically sealed enclosure eliminates the possibility of water leaking into the windings. The liquid medium inside the motor circulates between the rotor and stator liner, providing lubrication and cooling to the bearings. A wet winding motor is one in which the motor windings are in direct contact with a liquid medium, clean, clear water. A pressure balancing system prevents the exchange of the motor liquid medium and the well water due to thermal expansion and contraction when the motor is operating. The water contained inside of the motor surrounds both the stator windings and the rotor. 
A completely waterproof insulation protects the magnet wire used for the stator windings. The water inside the motor air gap and coils acts as a heat transfer device by circulating through the windings and transferring heat to the external casing where it dissipates. As is the case in all submersible type motors, the internal liquid medium is used for bearing lubrication. In this section, we'll examine exactly how a vertical turbine pump works. Inside a standard vertical turbine, the rotating line shaft turns the impellers in each bowl, providing velocity energy to the fluid. The bowl collects the fluid from the impeller and directs it up to the next bowl or to the discharge head. As the fluid flows through the impeller outlet, it passes through multiple cut water diffusers inside the bowl to balance the hydraulic radial thrust, which is created by the lateral pressure generated by the rotating forces. Adding stages increases the head pressure in order to create the desired pressure that is needed at the discharge. So, you've made the decision about the type and configuration of the turbine pump you need, but before you can order a pump, there are several things you'll need to know. The following is a list of terms and definitions that will help you make the proper pump selection. Datum, or grade, is the elevation of the surface from which the pump is supported. Static water level is the vertical distance from grade to the water level when no water is being drawn from the well. Drawdown is the distance between the static water level and the water level when pumping at the required capacity. Pumping water level is the vertical distance from grade to water level when pumping at the required capacity. Pumping water level equals static water level plus drawdown. Setting is the distance from grade to the top of the pump bowl assembly. Field pumping head is the lift below discharge plus the head above discharge plus friction losses in the discharge line. This is the head for which the customer is responsible and does not include any losses within the pump. Column friction loss is head loss in the pump due to friction in the column assembly. Friction loss is measured in feet and depends upon column and shaft size and setting. TDH is the total dynamic head which the pump bowl assembly must deliver at the given capacity. TDH equals field pumping head plus column friction loss. Laboratory efficiency is the efficiency of the bowl unit only. This value is read directly from the performance curve. Laboratory horsepower is the horsepower required by the bowls only to deliver a given capacity against laboratory head. Shaft friction loss is the horsepower required to turn the line shaft in the bearings. Field horsepower or brake horsepower is the sum of laboratory horsepower plus shaft loss and the driver thrust bearing loss under certain conditions. Pump field efficiency or water to water is the efficiency of the complete pump with all of the losses between laboratory and field performance taken into account. Total pump thrust is the sum of the weight of the shaft plus the hydraulic thrust of the liquid being pumped. Overall efficiency, or wire to water, is the efficiency of the pump and the motor complete. Overall efficiency is equal to the pump field efficiency times the motor efficiency.